Welcome to our Research Like a Pro with DNA question and answer series. And today we are discussing why does my leads chart contain more than four groups? And here you can see an image of a leads chart that isn't exactly what we would hope. So we're going to talk about this today. All right, so here is what a leads chart is supposed to look like and could look like with four distinct groups. And this is what we are hoping that we will find. But when it doesn't, we need to look and see what else might be going on. First, just a little bit of background on the leads method. It was developed by Dana Leeds in July of 2018. She was working with an adoptee. And of course, as an adoptee, you don't know who your close matches are, nor do you know who your grandparents are or your great grandparents are. And so she was looking for a way to make it a little bit easier to create some groups. And so she developed this method. And basically, she recommends starting with DNA matches who share between 90 centimorgans and 400 centimorgans. And you start with your match who is hopefully a second cousin, and you would give them a color. And then everyone who shares DNA with them who is a shared match gets the same color. Then you go down to your next match who is not sharing part of this blue group and give them a color and all of their sh shared matches get the next color. And you go on until this separates into some nice groups here. If you have not done this before and you're interested in doing that, you would go to DanaLeads.com, the leads method, and she has a lot of articles and helps for you in doing this. But one of the things that I have noticed is a new challenge. And this is if you have a test taker that is a few generations removed from younger DNA matches, and it may skew your leads chart. So we always are looking for a test taker who is the closest generationally to our ancestral couple. We're always looking for that parent or grandparent or an, an aunt or uncle, someone who's closer generationally. But as we have more and more people who are taking DNA tests at a younger ages, we're going to start getting quite a bit of separation here between generations, which can mess up our leads chart. So we're going to just do a little case study about this. And I'm going to show you the lead charts that I created for my test taker, Lucretia, who is a generation closer than me to our shared ancestral couple. So Lucretia is a granddaughter of William and Dora and I am a great granddaughter. So I always use her DNA when I'm working on projects. So here you can see her parents and you can see she has four grandparent lines. She should have a Becker line, a Carell line, a Schultz line, and a Royston line when doing, in an ideal world, the uh, Leeds method. So just to give you an idea of who Lucretia is and her ancestry. So the first attempt I made at doing a leads chart, I did use the parameters that were recommended 90 to 400. And I took out uh, the first cousins, but I neglected to take out their children and grandchildren. So what happened was this resulted in seven groups instead of those nice four groups that we looked at earlier. <clears throat> And there was a lot of overlap. So here was a group for her paternal side, but on her maternal side, which is the one I share, you can see there were a lot of people that shared with multiple, multiple groups. And so this obviously was not working very well for me. So let me show you why this happened. If we take a look at Lucretia's closest matches, here's a diagram I've created. Here's Lucretia, she's my test taker, and these are ancestry DNA matches. You'll see that I now have a new match. This is another test taker that I recruited who's on her same level, and he would be her first cousin. She has matches to her granddaughters, and then she's got quite a few people on this next level of first cousin once removed. So this includes me and other cousins here, and then even more matches on this level of first cousin twice removed, and even one down here of first cousin three times removed. So you'll notice that except for this group of cousins here, everyone is below 400 centimorgans, and technically they could be second cousins. But because they are further removed from Lucretia generationally, they are sharing a good amount, 
but they are still going to have the same ancestors as the first cousins. They're going to have connections to both the Schultz line and the Royston line. So it's going to keep them from separating out these, these clear lines here. So when I removed all of these extras from the leads chart or from my leads chart, lo and behold, I actually did come up with four grandparent lines. So here was that same blue line. This was the paternal matches, but here were the maternal matches that also correspond with my lines. So here are the Schultz and I call them the Eisenhower. That couple was Schultz Eisenhower. And here are the Royston Weatherfords. And so they separated out nicely, much better than the previous chart. And notice that there's just one little green match down here for the Corel line. And when I looked at Lucretia's pedigree, I saw that there were not very many children in this line. And very few people have taken a DNA test. And so sometimes you will have that. It may be that you actually only come up with two columns or maybe three because there just are not that many people who have tested. So keep that in mind as well. We always hope we'll get the four, but if we don't, it's okay. So this made a big difference in my analysis of Lucretia's DNA because when I first started and saw that chart with all of the crazy colors and the seven columns, I thought maybe there was some pedigree collapse going on and people were matching in more than one way. But in reality, I just needed to take out those children and grandchildren of first cousins. So here's a tip. If you are using Ancestry DNA, you can use through lines to discover these closest matches. So it will show you the first cousins, their children, and their grandchildren. If they all have a tree attached to through lines, linked to through lines, and if their tree is either public or private and searchable. So this can be really helpful because even if their tree is not public, as long as it's not private and unsearchable, they will show up in through lines and you can get some clues about where they come down, you know, which independent line they're coming through. And you can be able to chart those in your diagramming program. So what I like to do is use through lines in conjunction with something like diagrams.net or lucidchart to create a nice neat chart like this. And I like to do this because I can add to it as new people test and I can really clearly state relationships and I can put in whatever other information I want to, but I can see really easily where people fall on this family tree so that when I am creating my leads chart, I know exactly who to not include in that. So once you have diagrammed and you know how you're, you are connected or how someone is connected to your test taker, I recommend that you go ahead and put that in your notes. So for instance, between Lucretia and myself, I have added a note that I am a first cousin once removed, and then I have put in my line back to our common ancestral couple. Now, the beauty of doing this on Ancestry is that it will appear right here on your main page of matches so that as you're going down through and creating your leads chart, when you come to this and you see first cousin once removed, you'll know not to include this person in the leads chart. You can see right away who are the people you should include and the people you should exclude. So this can be really helpful once you've discovered those closer connections in creating your charts. For those of us who've done our genealogy and we know our cousins, you might think, well, it's, that's not very difficult. But if you're working with a different test taker and someone else's DNA results, you don't know they're close cousins. And so you'll have to do some work and you'll want to be reminded of it by making yourself some notes. All right. So as we finish this up, here are some tips. Use a diagramming program like lucidchartordiagrams.net and chart out those closest matches. Make sure you're adding some notes so you don't forget to add those to the testing company website. Make sure you put in the relationships. So you want to make sure you know that these are first cousins, once removed, twice removed, three times removed. And then you will be set to create your leads chart with only second cousins who will share only one great grandparents line instead of that overlap that we saw earlier. So I hope that helps you and gives you some tips about how to create a leads chart and have perhaps and hopefully those four columns show up. Thank you very much.
That was great. I love how you talked about including only the second cousins. And it's so tricky with those first cousins. And I wish we had a better name for first cousins once removed because they can be either one generation closer or one generation removed the other direction. And there's no way to distinguish those with the current terminology that we're using. Um, but you definitely want to include the ones that are closer, right? Up, up above because they could be, you know, descendants yes. of your great grandparents. Yes, <laughs> but with your example, Lucretia, is it going to have anyone that's closer because yeah. she's the, such an older generation? So it really comes down to understanding who the matches are and how they connect to the family. Right. And the, exactly. the ramifications of including them. <laughs> All right. Thank you.